I'm going to need your help here with this video. Mostly because, when it comes to the Ottawa Senators, I am a lot more of a newer fan of this team than I was in 2019, for example. Now, that's not to say they're one of my favorites, I just kind of like talking about them here on the channel because the Ottawa Senators fanbase is pretty nice to me, I feel, when I don't go out there and slander your team. Jokes, jokes, all kidding aside, though. When it comes to the Ottawa Senators, this trade is back from a time frame wherein I wasn't really all too educated on the rest of the hockey world. What I wanted to do here was go over a three years later type scenario about one of the biggest trades the Ottawa Senators had made in the Pierre Dorian era, I guess you could say. We're talking about the Mark Stone trade, accomplished with the Senators and the Vegas Golden Knights on February 25th, 2019. The reason I say I might need a little bit of help is because some of the details, some of the motivations behind the decisions here, I might not get these right 110%. So if anybody wants to go out there and correct me on any of the BS that I'm going to inevitably end up spewing in this video, hey, the comment section is your floor. Feel free to go out there, get all your thoughts, opinions, and comments out there. So let's get into the video now, shall we? So, today we're talking about Mark Stone, a current Vegas Golden Knights player, and a very, very good player as well. He's 30 years old, 6'4", 220, as a right-handed right-wing player. He's a big dude with a big contract. He's making $9.5 million a season till the end of 2027. We'll get into the contract and the contract history as this video goes on. Stone was initially drafted by the Senators back in 2010 as a six-round pick, 178th overall. After developing in the WHL, he eventually made the regular Ottawa Senators, quickly becoming one of the team's best forwards and an absolute two-way monster. It didn't take long for Mark Stone to go out there and put up his first 64-point campaign with the Ottawa Senators in 2014-15. He then followed those seasons up with 61 points in 75 games, 54 points in 71 games, 62 points in 58 games, and 62 points in 59 games in 2018-19. You see, the problem with Mark Stone had nothing to do with his talent or the projection of where the Senators were. In fact, the team almost made the Stanley Cup Finals, with Mark Stone being a key contributor to that squad. He had 8 points in 19 games as the team got eliminated by Chris Kunitz in Game 7 of the third round, but that's neither here nor there. Mark Stone was a very good player who was going to get himself a pretty big payday by the time 2017-2018 rolled around. This was because in this time frame, he was producing 60-point seasons like crazy, but he needed a contract extension. The Ottawa Senators signed him to a one-year, $7.35 million a season for the 2018-19 season, and it's around this time that we start to see sort of a sentiment with the Ottawa Senators and their management that shows that they really just don't want to go out there and shell the big, long-term dollars to any of the players they have. Now, in this time frame, Mark Stone was only 26 years old, so it's not really like he's the youngest or the oldest guy in the world. He's just a guy looking to get paid and play some pretty good hockey while getting paid. It led to an entire controversy heading into 2018-19, saying, hey, Stone is a very good player, he is very solid defensively despite being a winger, and the Sens are going to have to figure out what the heck they're going to do at the trade deadline because that one-year contract he signed, he's going to be a UFA at the end of it, and it was also signed during an arbitration filing. So there was already a lot of controversy with the future of Mark Stone in Ottawa in general. This is why the Senators ended up trading Stone to the Vegas Golden Knights, a brand new team in the league that was willing to go out there and shell out the big bucks to this guy on an extension. They signed him to that $9.5 million AAV contract, and it went on for four years. It's going on until 2026-2027. The guy's 30 years old right now. He will be, what is that, 35 when the contract expires. And honestly, I'm going to go out there and say that Mark Stone has been pretty worth it as a member of the Golden Knights. He's been sub-point-per-game-ish territory the entire time he has been there, getting 11 points in 18 games in his short stint to kick off his Vegas Golden Knights tenure. He also had 12 points in the seven-game series the team had against the San Jose Sharks, which is absolutely bananas. He then was a point-per-game player the next season, also was sub-point-per-game when the team went to the third round the first time he was there. He was over a point-per-game in 2020-2021, although his playoff production in that season was half a point a game. He also was given the captaincy somewhere along this time frame, and the recent season saw him put up 30 points in 37 games. He was injured for a good chunk of the year, and there was an entire LTIR fiasco going on here because, yeah, of course, Vegas and their long-term injury reserve shenanigans. 
Mark Stone also was a finalist for the Selkie Trophy twice as a member of the Vegas Golden Knights. And, I mean, that in and of itself might just go out there and show off how good this player was. I mean, the first time he was nominated, he was partly a Sen because he had spent half that season as a Senator. But at the end of the day, Stone is a good player. He's one of the best two-way forwards in the game, despite being a winger. And the trade that sent him over to Vegas in the first place was one that when you take a look at the value of Mark Stone as a player... Oh man, you really see just how much the value was swayed because of the contract situation here. The Ottawa Senators traded away a guy that was an absolute superstar alongside of Tobias Lindbergh, a former Sens prospect drafted in 2013 that went to other teams before coming back to Ottawa, in exchange for Oscar Lindbergh, Eric Bronstrom, and a 2020 second round pick. Now, this trade in and of itself features no players, aside from, I guess, Eric Bronstrom, who holds significant value. Oscar Lindbergh played 20 games with the Senators, getting 8 points, before yeeting off to Switzerland the next season. You then have yourselves Eric Bronstrom, whom we'll get to, and the draft pick, which became Igor Sokolov. Sokolov is a prospect that I like a lot, but you're really going to have to see a little bit more developing out of him before he becomes a mainstay NHL guy. He's still in Belleville, and he had himself a really good season, but at the NHL level, there's still more to be desired, especially since he's 22 years old and he's got a unique combination of a shot and size. Meanwhile, if you go over to Eric Bronstrom, he was supposed to be the quote-unquote bread and butter in this trade, coming back over for Ottawa. 22 years old right now, 5'10", 181 is a left-handed D-man, taken in the first round of the 2017 draft. I was always a huge fan of Eric Bronstrom, especially in the draft season that he had, because he was such a good offensive defenseman on the back end. It's just recently, he's been up and down with Ottawa, he was never really able to get a solidified role with the team. He had a good amount of points playing with the squad in 2020-2021, 13 points in 30 games played, but that points per game number reduced significantly the next season. Now, he was always good in the AHL, but there really is just a very strange development path that has gone out here with Eric Bronstrom that it's difficult to go out there and start defending this guy after all that he's gone through. I mean, I know the last video on the channel pretty much talked about Nick Robertson and said, hey, what the heck are you talking about? Robertson fatigue? Just be patient with the guy. But for Eric Bronstrom, the guy still doesn't have a contract for next season, and there have been trade rumors popping up again, talking about maybe he's unhappy, maybe the Sens don't like the way he's been progressing, and so, even though this is a player that I do believe has a sky-high ceiling, I do think that at his peak, he could be a 30-40 point defenseman, top four guy, power play manning guy. The Ottawa Senators just have not done a good job at bringing that out of him so far in the stints that he has had. There still are a few concerns here and there, and if you search Bronstrom's name on Twitter and Reddit, you'll find all the conversations going on about whether or not he's a keeper or he's somebody the Sens should consider moving. I mean, the Sens do have a lot of other good young defenders. Obviously, Shabbat is there. You have Lassie Thompson, who's a prospect I like. Jake Sanderson, Bernard Docker, Tyler Clevin, they're all in that conversation. And Eric Bronstrom is one of many that could potentially be the next one on the top four. So, for the compensation of the Mark Stone trade, it's really difficult to go out there and say that in any capacity, the Sens had themselves any victories here. And it's all having to do with that contract talk. Because Mark Stone, I mean, he signed an extension with Vegas a month, or not even a month, like two weeks after he was traded over there from Ottawa. They afforded that 9.5 AAV salary, and a lot of Sens fans said, darn it, man, I'm just happy that Mark is getting paid, because he's a good player, he deserves the money, it's just really unfortunate that the Sens would not have been able to go out there and actually match that kind of contract. Maybe not because they would have been able to, but because they just didn't want to. And so, nowadays, it's nice to see that Pierre Dorian is shelling out that big money to some of these players. Josh Norris, of course, he just got signed to a big-time deal. Brady Kachuk signed to a big-time deal. These are younger guys that are getting money, and I feel like it's somewhat justified when you acknowledge what they have done so far with Ottawa. But with all the players in the past, Matt Duchesne, Kyle Turris, Eric Carlson, Mark Stone, it's a shade of a former Senators team. It's a shadow in the background there, and it's just kind of unfortunate when you see how some of these guys left and how some of these guys ended up getting more or less assets for the team than others. Sure, the Eric Carlson trade was a big win, but the Mark Stone one, ay ay ay, that's a tough one to swallow now, isn't it? So, talk to the comments about your thoughts about Mark Stone and the trade which sent him from Ottawa to Vegas. What are your thoughts on the trade three years after the fact? I hope you enjoyed this video. And, bye.